cod swallop. It's like to punch someone. Like you cod swallop someone in the face, you know? No, you don't know. Dench. Like Judy Dench? Dench. Rhymes with bench. So not only did I get it wrong, but my alternate one was also the complete opposite. Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gun London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I've been an American expat living in the southeast of England for about 10 years. And today I am going to test my knowledge of different British phrases. The idea for this video came from the multiple people commenting on other videos, correcting um, all of the vocabulary I used or the way I pronounced British things or entirely saying that I have failed as someone living in the UK for the past 10 years because I know nothing. So I thought, you know what, let's actually test it out. I found an article that is titled 88 very British phrases that will confuse anybody who didn't grow up in the UK. Now, I didn't grow up in the UK, but I have lived here for 10 years. So we're gonna see like how far that's gotten me. And I'm a little afraid that it's gotten me not very far, but I am going to go ahead and read it off my phone without seeing the answer and try and guess or hopefully tell you what I know that it means. And then we're gonna check if I'm right. So let's jump into it. First phrase, a few sandwiches short of a picnic. I love this one and it's meaning someone who's stupid or doing something silly or stupid, kind of like not the sharpest tool in the shed. So I'm gonna go with like dumb. They're doing something dumb. Answer, someone that lacks common sense. Anorak. I think this means, does it mean parka or does it mean raincoat? Oh, okay. I think anorak is parka in Spanish. And I think it means rain jacket in the UK, I think. I would never use it. I don't, oh, okay. Anorak, rain jacket, final answer. Oh, it's more often used as a synonym for raincoat, okay. An anorak is something slightly different in playground slang. Someone that's a little bit geeky with strong interests or expertise in a niche area might be referred to as an anorak. Okay, learn something new today. Next one, bagsy. Okay, that means to like call something, like bagsy the front seat of the car. Calling bagsy is the equivalent of calling a shotgun. Okay, yes. Bees knees. Do people in the UK really say that? I feel like I've never heard anyone actually say that. That sounds more like an American thing, but if it's the bees knees, that means it's really good. The phrase has evolved and refers to something at the height of cool. The phrase became mainstream in the USA in the 1920s, but has British origins. All right, learn something new. Okay, next one, bender. Bender is like when you go out at night drinking for a long time and like to excess, to like go on a bender, I think. Someone on a spree of excessive drinking and mischief, which I think they say mischief here. I say mischief is on a bender. Okay, I'm gonna give myself that one. Blinder. Um, blinder. Bl I don't, blinder? Someone, no, blinder. Use it in a sentence. Blinder. Something that came out of nowhere that you didn't see coming. No. To pull, a, to pull a blinder involves achieving something difficult, faultlessly and skillfully. The phrase is most commonly used when the individual has been lucky and the person saying it is in disbelief that the first person has managed to pull it off. Okay, I got that one wrong. Bloody or bleeding. Okay, this is one of my favorites because to an American, this sounds like a fake curse word. So often people will say bloody here and then they'll be like, oh, excuse my French, sorry for saying that. And I'll be like, I. It sounds like you're in Harry Potter right now. Like I am, this is not a curse word to me, but bloody means like, I mean, how would I describe it? You know, like it's like a curse word, but it means like really something. Okay, answer. This intensifier can be added to practically any sentence in order to demonstrate anger. 
some people some people consider bloody offensive and it was considered a profanity until the mid 20th century. I have never said bloody and I never will, but again, it I have a hard time thinking of it as an offensive word. Bob's your uncle. Okay, this is a strange one, but I feel like I know it because I've heard it before. Bob's your uncle means like there you go. There you have it. Bob's your uncle. Like it's obvious that Bob is your uncle. So it's like obvious that this thing is a thing. Does that make sense? Answer. The very British equivalent to hey presto or voila. Bog standard. Bog standard means like it's just basic. Though I don't know the origins because I feel like bog is like a toilet here. Answer, something that is bog standard is completely ordinary with no frills, embellishments, or add-ons. Boot. Boot is the trunk of a car and also something that you wear on your feet, depending on the context, but they're probably meaning the trunk of your car here. Yes, correct. Botch job. Botch job is when somebody, like, say a plumber comes into your house to do the piping and he does a botch job, which means he rushes it and he doesn't do a very good job, but like on purpose, he's do he's trying to cut corners. Answer, a repair job that's been completed in a hurry and will probably fall apart reasonably soon. Okay, I'm gonna give myself that one. Okay, next, brawly, that is an umbrella. Budge up, budge up. I think that means like move, move, mm. like budge. You know, like to budge a little, move a little, move, move a little somewhere budge up. Or does it mean like buck up? Uh, I'm gonna go with like move a little to move to move a little. Okay yes answer an informal way of asking someone to make room where they are sitting budge up. Builder's tea. Okay people really got on me in the tea video about my comments about British tea. Like a builder's tea is like a basic tea that you give your builder when he comes around to do work on your house, but I don't know the exact brand or if it is an exact brand, it's just like, like the, like a basic tea. Okay, Builder's Tea, according to this article, is the name of a strongly brewed cup of English breakfast tea with milk, the way that tea is most commonly drunk in the UK. Okay, so it's just a cup of tea, Builder's Tea, okay. Next one, butchers. I mean, a butcher is where you go to cut meat. Well, you don't go there to cut meat, but they cut meat right? No, 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 no. Okay. Answer. Butcher's hook is cockney rhyming slang for look. Therefore, if you're having a butcher's, you're having a look at something. Have never heard this. This is super interesting. Example, would you take a butcher's at this broken bike for me? The more you know. Okay. Next one. Cack handed. Okay. Now these are getting hard. Cack handed is when you do is like, it means something bad. Like you're not good at it. Something, something bad. We're going with it means something bad. Okay, answer. A task performed in an awkward or uncomfortable fashion, usually, usually clumsily. I'm not gonna give myself that one, but at least I knew it was something bad. Cheeky. Okay, cheeky is when someone is like purposefully being defiant or something like you would call a kid cheeky. Oh, there's lots of different things. Okay. You would call a person cheeky if they like knew they were trying to get away with something, but then also people say like cheeky Nando's, which then turns it into like, I don't know, something that you're not supposed to be doing that you're doing, which kind of the same thing, but we're going to go with like, doing something that you know you're not supposed to be and trying to get away with it. An act which could be deemed as impolite or shameless, but for some reason comes across as funny or endearing to others would be described as cheeky. See, I don't use cheeky in sentences because I feel like I don't understand the full meaning, but if someone else uses it in a sentence, like I know what they're trying to get at. Chinese whispers. This is what it would be called like when you play a game of telephone and eventually the message gets garbled up or rumors. Does it mean rumors? 
Okay, we're gonna go with rumors, final answer. Chinese whispers are rumors that have been circulated and watered down until they only vaguely resemble the truth. I'm gonna give myself that one. Next one, chin wag. A chin wag is like a conversation, but I don't exactly know. You're like having a chin wag with your friend. You're having a conversation, but it's like a jolly conversation. It's like a, like a chin wag, you know? Okay, chin wag is a good chat, catch up, or gossip with someone. The action of chatting away with the jaw bobbing up and down resembles a chin wagging like a dog's tail, apparently. Chalk a block. Chalk a block means it's full of something. Like, chalk a block. Well, how would I use it in a sentence? See, I don't use most of these things in sentences because I know that I would sound stupid. Chalk a block. It just means like full. Okay. Answer, something full to the brim or rammed could be described as chock-a-block. I've heard this mostly in reference to like traffic, maybe. Don't quote me on that. Okay, chuffed. Chuffed means you're happy, you're excited, you're like so chuffed that you got accepted to the college, well, university that you wanna go to. Okay, answer, overjoyed, full of pride, gonna give myself that one. Clanger. Clanger has to do clanger. Does clanger have to do with cars or with music? Something's a clang. I feel like if something's a clanger, it's like a song that's really intense or something like that. But equally part of me is like, maybe in America we use something similar to refer to like a car. I'm gonna go with something related to music. It's like a really, like a, like a music that you can like really get involved in. No. That is not it at all, apparently. Answer, an obvious and indiscreet mistake or blunder. Completely wrong on that one. Cod swallop. I don't, I don't know what that means. Cod swallop. I mean, I feel like I've heard it maybe once. Cod, like fish, swallop, cod swallop. I don't even think I could come up with an, I say educated guess, but I guess none of these guesses are really educated cod swallop. It's like to punch someone. Like you cod swallop someone in the face, you know? No, you don't know. Answer. Something untrue, often made up for dramatic effect. Next one. Cost a bomb. That means to cost a fortune. I know that. Cream crackered. Ugh. Cream crackered. T mm, I don't think it means tired cracker but like they call someone who is crazy crackers cream crackered something cream crackered like something crazy like someone's gone crazy you're cream crackered okay answer cockney rhyming slang for knackered if you're cream crackered then you're incredibly tired curtain twitcher okay i don't know if i've actually heard this one in conversation but I can just guess that a curtain twitcher is a neighbor who is always like keeping up on the neighborhood, like a nosy neighbor, because there are a lot of those in the UK. I mean, there are a lot of those in the US, but just naturally we're a lot closer here in the UK, so it's easier for the nosy neighbors to be nosy. Okay, answer a nosy neighbor, got that one correct. Thank you, my own neighbors. Okay, next one, Dench. Like Judy Dench? Dench, rhymes with bench. Dumb? Dench? Stench? I don't know. D dumb? I'm gonna go with, no. I've never heard this. Dench. I'm gonna go with dumb. Cause you're like, you're dense. So you're, you're dench on a bench. Answer, an adjective used to advocate something that is impressive or agreeable. Dench is the equivalent of solid or cool. Okay, did not get that one. Dim. That means, that means someone is dumb. That means someone is not smart. Doddle. Doddle is what British people say when they're like, just gonna have a doddle around the shopping mall. Uh, what they call it, a shopping mall? No, whatever they would call it. The, I can't, that's too many words right now. But they would have a doddle. It's like, you're not really going anywhere in particular, but you're just like hanging around. No. Or does doddle mean like, oh, it's a doddle. So it's like, it's annoying doddle. Okay, final answer. I'm gonna go with like, you're just hanging out, but I think I'm wrong. Okay, doddle. 
An easy task is a doddle. So not only did I get it wrong, but my alternate one was also the complete opposite. Dog's dinner. I feel like this is gonna be something bad, like food that's not good. It's dog's dinner. A meal that's disgusting. Answer, a dog's dinner is a mess or a fiasco, sometimes also referred to a dog's breakfast. So it does not actually apply to dinner. It simply uh, refers to a mess. Faff. A faff is something that is like annoying to do. It's such a faff. It's got too many parts, but it's like, it's not a super difficult thing. It's just something that you, it's like, it's just, it's just a faff, you know? To faff is to waste time doing very little. Okay, so yeah, you can like faff around, but equally something that you have to do can be a faff because it's like a lot of different things, but you're, it's just like an annoying kind of task, I feel. Okay, fit. Okay, I'm glad we finally got to one that I can actually explain. Fit does not necessarily mean physically fit here in terms of your body. Fit means like hot. So if someone says like, oh, she's fit, they're not necessarily saying that she has abs. They're saying that she's hot or he's hot. Uh, fit, used to describe someone physically attractive. Yes, it does say usually referring to their physique, but I'm still holding to the fact that they would use fit in a different way than Americans would use fit because we would really only use fit if we were like, wow, you are really in shape. Um, but they are definitely also referring to like their face and their looks. Flog. <sighs> okay, I feel like to flog something is to try and sell something that maybe you don't believe in your, or like really intensely. Like to sell something, but kind of in a scummy way. To flog means to sell something usually quickly and cheaply. Okay. Kind of. Full Monty. Okay, I have this really, really weird thought that maybe it has something to do with like a full English breakfast, but then equally I think like full Monty means like you're all in. It's like all the way. So we can go English breakfast or all the way. I'm gonna go something related to English breakfast. And if this is not right, you may laugh at me. I just feel like it's something like, I'm gonna have a full Monty, you know? Okay. <laughs> no. Well, okay, kind of. Okay, full Monty actually refers to pursuing something to the absolute limits. But equally, the example that it gave is our Christmas dinner had everything from sprouts to Yorkshire puddings, if you're going to have a roast, have the full Monty. So I feel like I have heard this in relation to English breakfast because you're like having all of the, the pieces and parts, you're having the full Monty. So I don't think I was right, but I think I was on the right track. Okay, so this video is getting relatively long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a part two because there are lots more phrases to get through. But for now, remember, check in the description for a link to the Facebook group you can join where we talk about British life. Also check out the Girl Gone London book, which is a book I wrote about specifically American expat life in the UK. If you are an expat from other parts of the world, you will find most of it useful. It's just that I use America as a comparison because it's easier to compare to one versus to compare to nothing at all. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave any below that you have learned or want me to test to see if I know, and I'll see you guys next time.